an opportunity Lord, to experience you your glory, to experience your power. We, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your name. We adore you. We honor you. We adore you, Lord Jesus. Father, we bless you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We honor you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We proclaim you a king. We thank you for another opportunity to seek your face. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Oh, yes, be exalted. 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 Carato se vegede. E pranto le fregato le cados. Arianto le fregato se. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Oh, yes. Lord, Father, we, bless we you. honor you, Father, Lord. We, bless we adore you, Lord. We, bless we exalt you, Father, Jesus. We, bless you. we give we you give all the praise. We glory. give you all the glory. In the, name of In the Jesus. mighty name of you, Jesus. Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I welcome all of you into uh, this live broadcast. It's our call of the day. I know that the theologians will want to pick me on. They say, in the cool of the day, is not in the afternoon. Yes. In the cool of the day, I understand that it is not even time. It's about God visiting man. And when he visited them, what went on? Why is it that in Genesis 3 verse 8, the Bible says, in the cool of the day, when they heard the voice of the Lord, they began hiding. Because it was a season, a time, where they were receiving instructions and teachings on how to prosper in the garden in God's presence. Hallelujah. Now as a commission, the Lord has said so much concerning us, so much, like I was telling my wife, I think my family, that we've been hearing prophecies, but this last season, uh, the 19th year into this 20th season, the year of the church, the next five years, there are so much God has said. I want to remind us of the very first prophetic declaration before we enter, uh, before we enter, because I want to teach, I want to use this afternoon sessions, 40 minutes or so, to teach us to understand some things. Amen. Now, before I do that, I want you to hear this. You are so unique that you don't need to compare yourself with anybody. Somebody can eat rice right now and be fine. You will eat and you will have issues. It speaks of how unique you are. Amen. Spiritually, it's the same thing. We all belong to God. We are God's children. But he has called us to do a certain assignment for him. We call it the commission. So when you join a church, you have not just been attracted to the building and the way the man of God operates, you have also been attracted to the assignment of the church. Hallelujah. Now, this is what it means that we cannot just be running after the blessings or the reward of that commission or that church when we ignore the responsibilities. So, to, to, to summarize it, to enjoy 
benefits or rewards or blessings of anything, you must know what is required of you also. It's not legalistic. You, know, you can stretch it however you want, but it is not legalistic because we can't even please God beyond our, uh, what he has prescribed. Hallelujah. So based on this understanding then, I want us to, I want to remind you on the 27th of November as the Reverend Dr. Prophet Garvey was sharing the word of the Lord, he paused and he began to declare a prophetic word to the church. And I want you to take a lesson because I'm teaching from that perspective. This week, I'll be teaching from that perspective. So let's take a lesson very quickly. The church. Media team, if you are ready. And God come. said, just as I said to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, tell the angel of the church in Akosu, Say at the Lord that in the coming year, one of the things that will be evident in this church is access. Where God will give people in this church access to strategic places, strategic people, strategic positions, strategic people, strategic places, strategic positions. You know why? So that when we are about to do something and there is the need to consult someone in a place by the time you get there then you have somebody there who has it sorted out i'm telling you i'm telling you the lord said tell the angel of the church in a kosombo that the one who is holy the one who is true the key, the one who opened it and no one shot, the one who shot and no one opened it, he said tell him that I will open a door that no one and I will close a door that no one one of the things God will close in this church is the outlet and the outlet that allows people to go without the end Say in the law that outlet will be shut and no one will open. And do not allow yourself to be used as a tool to try to open the outlet. Because God said, if you attempt to open the outlet, that he will shut. Know that the one who is speaking is the Lord, the possessor. And the dispenser. Now church, I want you to stretch your hands towards this altar. Stretch your hands towards the word influence. As a matter of fact, if I am to sum up this prophetic word, it boils down to what? Influence. You are praying, there is a reason. There is a reason God gave this word influence to you, sir. And the Lord said, influence does not end because the year 2023 ended. The Lord said the influence he gave you was not for 2023. 2023 was just meant to be an one. One of the things God will close in this church. Being God the Lord that in Kosovo. Say at the Lord that in the coming year, one of the things that will be evident in this church is access. Where God will give people in this church access to strategic places, strategic people, strategic positions, strategic people, strategic places, strategic positions. You know why? So that when we are about to do something and there is the need to consult someone in a place, by the time you get there, then you have somebody there who has it sorted out? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The Lord said, tell the angel of the church in a Kosovo that the one who is holy, the one who is true, the one who has the key, the one who opened it and no one shot, the one who shot and no one opened it. He said, tell him that I will open it. in 
this church is the outlet. Any outlet that allows people to go without any reasonable reason. Say the law that outlet will be shut and no one will open. And do not allow yourself to be used as a tool to try to open the outlet. For he got here. So it's okay. Let's just go over. But I need everybody to go back. I really wanted to capture. Um, he was prophesying. Then he stopped and said, actually, the Lord said he should tell me that and he started by saying that the lesser is blessed by the greater. I don't know whether you remember that bit. Now, it is important that we get it right. And I am with all humility teaching on this subject this morning or this afternoon. Um, not seeking to uh, force things down our throat, but let us understand how the kingdom operates. Amen. Amen. We need to understand how the kingdom operates. Now, in my introduction, I said that the Spirit of God has been speaking to us expressly about God granting the church access. The access granted is bringing us supernatural advancement, is bringing us restoration, is bringing us a mighty harvest of God's kindness, of God's kindness. And... Um, we said that the Spirit of God added that he is going to do all these things through his set man, the apostle and the prophet of the commission. That is that portion I really wanted because he was very emphatic. He stopped and said, actually, this prophetic word is on your head. And as you declare, it will happen. I want you to understand something that, number one, it is Christ Jesus who has given us the privilege to stand in his place. As I teach on this, I do not in my wildest imagination or the figment of my mind seek to take the place of Jesus. No. I just am assuming my place in him. Hallelujah. Last year, I think I worked extensively on this where I said that because he ascended on high, he gave captivity uh, he said captivity captive and he gave gift unto men meaning that God himself in his wisdom in his comfort decided to choose men who will walk here on earth in his place hallelujah hallelujah and so you see scriptures like Matthew 16 where he said that anybody who you forgive their sin is forgiving and anybody you hold on sometimes you see there have been so much um, turmoil in the church, misunderstanding in the church that um, some of us are not even able to talk about the truth. For instance, one of the scriptures that has been so abused in the church is that touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. And so, I mean, everybody goes to misbehave and he quotes, he, he quotes that scripture. But that, see, the fact that there are excesses and there are abuse should tell us that the original is also there. Hallelujah. You, you cannot have photocopy or fake when there is no original. How do you tell that this is the original? We can only tell original from the others because the original exists. Now for us in this church and this broadcast purely is for members of this church and people who relate with me. Now the trust or the crest of this prophetic word is this that God is going to do so much. He talked about openings avenues and he, he spoke about what God is going to dispense and, and do for his people specifically because he is going to use his servant, say his servant. Now it means that the man of God or your set man of God should be properly related with properly related what with it's important that we are able to understand jesus himself taught us on the father-son relationship 
we are not gods. No pastor is a god. But every pastor as a set man, a founder, a pioneer, has certainly a certain place in the scheme of God. God has set him apart to be able to do some things. Whether you agree or not, it is so. Hallelujah. And I want to begin this teaching as we read from Colossians chapter 1 verse 24 to 29. And then from tomorrow we will go into some things. My heart desire which the Lord knows and I thank him for what he is doing amongst us is that, that all may do well, that all may prosper. But you and I will agree that in this life, wishes are not enough. Hallelujah. And I remember during that convention, the man of God told us that there are times when God himself opens a door and as you enter, misfortune follows you. And he gave a specific example about the children of Israel. It was God who opened the Red Sea. It was not the staff of Moses. It was not the powers of Moses. It was not the prayer of Moses. It was God himself who opened the sea. But as they entered and they were going, the enemy followed after them. But God closed it. Hallelujah. So the, the important thing to understand here is that, yes, God is for everybody. God loves all his children. But he has a special place for those who receive respect his protocol, say protocol, who respect his way of doing things. They have been saying this, and I keep saying, and I will say this afternoon, uh, that for instance, it is not normal that your parents will be there and someone else will take care of you. It is not normal. When you see such scenarios, it is one off thing, hallelujah. What it means is that when God gives you parents, he gives you all you will need through the parents. Now parents who understand this concept also are mindful that what they have received is not to make them big great or powerful but to also become a channel to the children but you will agree with me also that not all children receive from their parents why because there are certain order that is not followed hallelujah and so as we read a few a colossians i want to bring your understanding to establish strongly that this church is a kingdom church. We believe in order and protocol. Number one, we believe that Jesus is our Lord, our master, and our savior. Hallelujah. No controversy. Nobody can take the place of Jesus. Nobody. We also believe that Jesus as our Lord and personal savior, yes, wants all men to know him personally, but has also chosen men who will lead us. Hallelujah. He wants you to know him personally. He wants you to have a personal revelation because these days, it is almost becoming a pride and the downfall of many Christians. Oh, know God for yourself. Oh, no. I mean, how much of God can you even know for yourself? How much? It is true that you can fast and pray and know. But listen to me. When you have a father showing you the way, what would take you 100 years? You can just gain it in 100 days. Hallelujah. And, and whenever I want to talk about this father the relationship, the picture that comes to me readily is David. Can you imagine? His own earthly father at the most crucial point in his life forgot about him. He forgot, but for God, who told Samuel the prophet, ask him, are these all your sons? Then he said, ah, there is one view. What he was trying to say is that even though I have remembered him, it doesn't matter. Can you imagine if there was no spiritual fatherhood, what would have happened to David? His opportunity would have passed like that. I am sharing with you a similar situation, WCCI. We are in a season of our lives where God wants to transfer heavy load blessings unto us. That which our father's names could not give us. That which our ancestral names could not give us. That which our backgrounds could not give us. He is using this commission he has established to represent him here on earth to usher us into it hallelujah it is important to understand how these things work and trust God for the discipline and trust God for the humility to be able to just follow and your life will be more easier more 
blessed and more gracious. Am I communicating? It is important, my brothers and sisters, we cannot behave like the people out there. You follow their theology, you follow their teachings, you follow their philosophy. I won't even call it theology because it's not theology. Theology is basically the study of God. Some of the things that people teach out there is fallacious. Highly, highly fallacious. It's a fallacy. It means that it is full of lies. It's not applicable. It may be somebody's experience which not many people can practice and also end up as they ended up. Am I communicating? And so it's important for us to understand that what the Lord has said, he did it. the man of God didn't mean words. The man of God did not hear partially. He heard clearly. What it means is that God has a pattern through which he wants greatness to be raised in this church. Hallelujah. This afternoon as I stand here, trust me, it is my desire to say that, look, let's declare opening. When I say, say it after me. But the church must understand that you don't just say things because for them to happen, there must be a basis. Am I communicating? We are told in the book of Acts of the Apostles that one day the sons of a priest called, called Scabia went out and they saw a madman. And when they saw the madman, they bid him to come. And when he came, they said to him, In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, come out and listen to what the demon said. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Isn't it interesting? Their father was a priest. So the demon should have mentioned their father's name also. But you must understand that this happened in the territory of Ephesus, Asia Minor. And the Bible says in the book of First Corinthians, Paul said, for I have fought the beast of Ephesus. Yesterday I was explaining to you that the authority behind the man is measured by how long he has worked with God. And that length of time is a sum of his weaknesses, his strength, his obedience, his sacrifices, and how truthfully he has followed God these are resume you can't joke with amen knowledge is not enough knowledge is not what enough you need somebody who has the capacity you need somebody and, and I remember the man of God kept telling us that, that there are people you go to interview with hey, you are better but you will be sidelined when they will be picked why because they came with a name that is heavy they came with a name that is proven I declare that whatever God has brought me to in my obedience in my work with her any level he has brought me to and the access that level gives me I declare that it is open to the church I declare that it is open to every member that's what I can say for now as to whether you will enter the open door or not will be measured by understanding the protocols that governs how these things work so the Bible says that God sent some of the prophets because he knew that the earthly father of just uh, David, Jesse will forget about him. And true, true, when you read from chapter 16 of First Samuel, truly he was forgotten. When they went, even the prophet himself, because God did not tell him that uh, it is David. He said, I have chosen for myself. And when he got there, he began to look by height. He began to look by, the, I mean, the stature of the person, the beauty and the handsome nature and God said look someone I don't like what you are doing you are a man you see the way man sees but I see differently I watch the heart there is a guy somewhere out there who I have chosen go and anoint him and so someone said to uh, Jesse hey my brother hey my son who is there that has not appeared here in this gathering and Jesse said I remember there is one more son but that one he said no we are not sitting down until you bring him here I'm just giving you all the stories which you already know to understand that to have a desire is different from having that desire accomplished between your dream and the reality of that dream you require some patriarchs you require some forerunners you require some father what you call it fathers who will hold your hand and their voice over you will settle the matter in your favor i don't know who i'm talking about this afternoon some of you you have been knocking hard some of you you've been working hard some of you you've been praying hard you've been pushing and doing your best but the 
doors don't seem to recognize you because doors don't just recognize. Remember, doors represent authorities. Doors and gates represent what? Authorities. It takes a higher authority to open a lower authority. Jesus' name is the most precious gift we have. The Bible says at the mention of his name, every knee shall bow. But Paul didn't end there in Philippians chapter 2. When you go to the verse 12, he says, therefore, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and tremble. It is not that the, the, the technicalities. There are details that will make your work with God better am I communicating and so this afternoon one of the things I want to share with you is that for this season to really benefit you you must define your relationship with the house the first key clearly define your relationship with the house Jesus said in the book of John chapter 10 that God will not allow a hireling, a hired labor to lead the flock. You know why? Because when there is danger, he will run away. Now, if the shepherd will not be a hired one, but be made an owner, should the sheep be a hired sheep? The sheep must also identify that this is our father hallelujah now let's read some few things and then I, I will establish this strongly but don't forget it I said you must clearly what define your your relationship in the house are you a visitor or you are a member even membership you must define it are you a son daughter or you are a friend there are two different things when the father wants to relate and bless. In Genesis chapter 50 or 49, we are told, and Jacob sat down and said, bring me my sons so that I will tell them what is ahead. He didn't say bring in the visitors. He didn't say bring in the friends. He said bring me mine. See, I want you to understand that your relationship with the house now begins to separate you for other privileges hallelujah so number one for you to benefit in the next five years and even in the past and in the future uh, because i know my sons and daughters some of you are very wild i'm not your only daddy i don't really have a problem our children gloria and ivan no matter who they call daddy they know that i am their only daddy there are sacrifices their only daddy will make for them Yesterday, I happened to be on phone all day. They are not here. They are in Kumasi. Not because I don't trust them. I trust them. Why? Because we had gone to look for certain places for them to stay and there were challenges. And as a father, I was calling. What is happening on ground? Are you okay? And I was praying behind the scenes. I am sure some of you or some of our members yesterday also had difficulties. But you couldn't even call me because I'm not your father. Hey! This conversation is hot. You can't even call me because I'm not your father. The thing with fathership or fatherhood and daughterhood or sonship is that there are no barriers. Hallelujah. Can you imagine one time? I know she would not be happy as I'm sharing this. Our daughter called me one early morning. That's not we have times we, we, we talk and we pray. She called me very early because she had an early morning lecture and said, Daddy, let's talk. Don't ask me any question. I said, Ah, talk about what? He said, Let's talk. Don't ask me any question. Apparently, a guy was trying to toast her and she didn't want to be rude. So she engaged me. As long as I'm talking to my father, you cannot interrupt me with your nonsense. That is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. You must clearly define your relationship to the house. Are you a visitor in the house? Are you a friend of the house? Or are you a member of the house? Are you a daughter or a son? You must declare it. You must declare it. Visitors in the house they are like people who enter a hotel room. They don't need to dress the bed. They don't need to clean the place. They don't need to enter the kitchen and cook. Mark these three things. They don't need to. All they need to do is to pay for the house. So you come to church, you give offering. You have just paid for the room for yourself. 
We have room service, which is ushers and choir. They will entertain you for what you have paid for. That is where your money ends. If you want more, the relationship must change. Hallelujah. If you want more, the relationship must what? Must change. So you must clearly define it. You must clearly do what? Define your relationship in the house. There are many people in this house who are friends of the house. They know me. They have my number. They can call me. It doesn't make you a son or a daughter. This conversation will be an interesting one. And I pray you will open your heart and receive. And you will be blessed. Trust me, I'm sharing this without any malice. And without any sense of superiority over anybody. I'm sharing this because I am a recipient. I know my father in the Lord will pass through when we are going to dedicate. And he will tell you how faithful I am as a son. I don't joke with my responsibilities. Thankfully, I live with my mother. And I don't joke with my responsibilities. That's the thing. You, you see, sonship is not the title you take. It's a responsibility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So number one, you must define who you are to the house. It's important to understand that every house has a head. Amen. Every house. For instance, uh, my secretary lives in a house. There are plenty of people there, but there is a head. Let me begin to go there. First day, enter her room. Eat and go out. Second day, enter. By the third day, there will be a meeting. And say, who does he think he is? What makes him think he can just enter this house and go away? And then they will question her. Why is it so? And even that, the elderly ones there will say, eh, hey, he must respect us. Because you must understand how authority works and the grace that flows through proper authority structures. Coming back to my point, who are you to the house and the father of the house? Ask your neighbor whilst I take a chill pill. Ask them, who are you? I love the fact that somebody, some, some people, somebody he told my son, you are my mother. I love that. She has defined a role in the house. Who are you in the house? To the house. Those of you online, if you can text somebody, text them quickly. Who are you? The truth about sonship and daughtership is that you can say it if you are not. You yourself, you know you are not. So the first conversation we are having today, my time is almost gone, eight minutes more. But I want to take my time and break this down. Who are you to the house? Ah, I've heard there is an un and, and sometimes we don't get it. So people roam everywhere they hear they can get prophecy. As for God, eh, he will not deny you his mind though. He will tell you. But how it will come to pass is another matter. That's what many people don't understand. And I, I know that on that day, many people will see their records of giving and they will be shocked to hear that you give this one here. I mean, I didn't send you. So it will not attract any reward. Oh, you don't know. It's not every giving you have reward for it. Give right. Amen. Hallelujah. Who are you to this house? As a father of the house, I know who my sons are. Some of you, my sons and daughters, you are so shameful. We agreed to do something. And then I even bring my part of the contribution. Add yours. You won't, even, you won't even bring it. If I'm your father, will you treat me like that? Hey, the room is getting hot. <laughs> heat, 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 heat. I'm bringing heat to the room. See, truth be told, there is no point. The Bible calls it fantasy. To walk in ideas, that is only convenient for you but has no resource effect on your life. From today, I pray for you that you will discern between what works and what is beautiful. I will go for the what works any day, any time. 
Hallelujah. Am I communicating? Church, we need to come to that place. Define who you are to the house. Who are you? If I go around and ask somebody, look to the black eye spot in their eyes. And those of you online, I see that you are doing well. Who are you to the house? Who are you? What did you see? Compared to the answers they gave you, what do you see? Is it genuine or is it fake? Are they buying time? <laughs> oh, the, some of the sisters, I know they are just waiting to be married and be called missus. It's our prayer. We want it for you. Enjoy that marriage. But how can you, because of marriage, forget about your family? When things are bad, who do you go to? You think your friends, they care so much. Let me, I have experiences in this life. I was sharing something with my wife this morning. I said, look, we must, the earlier we understand that the kindred spirit is all we have, the better. You know, so-called friends, they don't care. They don't care. These are people who will be lying to you. Hmm, even me, I don't have anything to eat. Oh. And yet, when you are gone, they open their side cupboard and they have stew there. What, what does the word of God say? That if a brother comes to you and says, I'm hungry, and you say, go well, the Lord provide, you have not done well. These are people you deal with, like friends. They are quick to tell you about what they don't have before you dream of asking them something. Before you dream, who are you to the house? I would leave you to go and think about it. But let me just give you some few keys. Who are you to the house? The difference between sons, visitors, and friends. So when I say sons, I'm not taking the daughters out. Sons and daughters. So without tables, I want to enumerate it. Once upon a time, there was a student writing exams. And the question says, without tables, state the advantages and disadvantages of a contour line. He lifted his hand to the invigilator and said, please, the question says without tables. So come and take the table away. I said, wow, but um, how do you write? So, <laughs> without tables. So without a table, I want to give us how to identify a son from a friend and a... Guys, I know the Bible says that there is a friend who stays closer than a brother, not a son. No friend can stay closer than a son or a daughter. Am I communicating? Number one, like I gave you about visitors. When visitors go to a place, all they deal with is legal. So you pay. I sleep in hotels a lot. You pay and woe to you if you don't have patience and you run hotel business, you will die. They enter the room. The first cockroach, they will call. There is cockroach in your room. They enter the washroom. The tap is not coming well, they will call. Your tap is not flowing. They enter the room. The bed sheet has a little dust on it. They will call. That, you know why? Because in their mind, it's a legal agreement. I have paid you and you must satisfy me. So the signs of being a visitor in a church, no matter how long you have been in, is when you only have an eye for faults and mistake. You are a visitor. Hello! Which visitor am I speaking to? You only, you, you, just say, you are anointed. Just say, just say, you are so blessed that you can only see what has not been done wrong. That's how visitors behave. And if you are a visitor today, there is room for you to repent. Change. Don't even become a, a friend, become a son or a daughter. Visitors, number two, beyond their complaints, they don't contribute to the growing of the house. So they call the reception. Eh, what do you have? The reception tells you, go to number 100, it's kitchen. Eh, but you should be able to. Hey. So they call kitchen. And they say, I want fresh tilapia 
spicy pepper and banku. How many minutes? If you are a cook, you will not be asking for food and ask how, much, how many minutes. Whether they have the products or not, you don't care. And that's the third thing about people who are strangers in the house. They want the pastor to always be on fire. Do you think who can stay by fire throughout his life? Eat! Who? Who? Nobody stays on fire throughout their lives. Even fire to cook. You don't need the same fire to cook every meal. True? Some, some particular food, you need to just, as if you have forgotten it is cooking. But when you are not a son or a daughter, but a visitor, you don't have patience. You know, all these small girls, when we got born again, we were serious with God. Look at them. Charlie, when you got born again, you, you were serious with God because there was no telenovela. There was nothing that was competing with your faith for God. No phone. Heat. And I'm not speaking for this generation. No. I'm not speaking for them, but I'm telling you, if you know what these children are tempted with, you will thank God that they are in church. And we will look for ways and means to help them to stay in church instead of wanting to castigate them all the time. These are a generation who have temptation in their bedrooms. Some of them in their pocket, in their school bag. Temptation. Oh, no, no, no. no. Temptation, yeah. He is going with temptation. His, his pocket, even in his money, is temptation. Maybe in the course I will share with you the challenges of the West now. The sexual perversions of the West. And this is the testimony of a teacher. This is a course I did in cultural anthropology. What influences behavioral patterns in different parts of the world. Students come to classroom and whilst this teacher is teaching, two, three of them, they say, Madam, my head is aching me. Get closer to their decks and they have a phone on their laps watching pornography. That's what we are talking about. If you understand this generation, we will have a bigger heart for them. And thank God that they are in church and help them to conform. I was asking somebody, one small girl like that, 18, she has three boyfriends. I said, why? He said, ah. He said, that ah even made me, I wanted to slap him, put him. Ah, I said, how? He said, I don't know. And every question you ask, I don't know. Then the next thing you see, she's crying. What? Are you a visitor? A son, daughter, or a friend. May the Lord add his blessings to the word this morning. We want to pray shortly. And your prayer is that, Lord, open my eyes to the truth. Shortly, pray this prayer. One, one minute and let's close. Tomorrow I'll continue. Open my eyes to the truth. Let my eyes be open to the truth. Lord, let my, let eyes, my eyes be open, be open to, the to the truth. In the name of Jesus, da, 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 open my eyes to the truth, le, Lord. Le, 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 let my le, eyes be open to the truth. Ba, 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 let my ba, 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 eyes be open to open the truth. My open my eyes. Open to my word. eyes. Open my open eyes to my the eyes. truth. In the, In the name, name of, Jesus. Of, Jesus. of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to be here in the evening. We're going to pray. The afternoon sessions is not so much for prayer. It's to pass on information because Jesus said we must watch and what? Pray. What is the essence of watching? Observe, learn, and take advantage. So how do you take advantage when you don't know? So the essence of this afternoon sessions really is not for prayer, but maybe towards the end, the last week, I'll be making some serious prophetic declarations into the heavens. Hallelujah. And I'm trusting God that you are going to, you know, uh, somebody sent me a message. Papa, who are you to the house? I am the papa of the house. I am the papa of the house. I have answered, I am. How can I be a stranger in my own house? And it is you who make me a stranger. That's the only reason why I will be a stranger. God bless you. I seem to be enjoying what I'm doing. That's me. This thing, when I'm sick and down, you lift me to this pulpit, I will preach. That's my covenant with God. God bless you so much. I love you. Take care of yourself. Drink water mildly. Don't be chewing granite or uh, pineapple or banana and be hiding. 
please. Some of you are even buying up like you and all that. Please, easy, easy. Wait, after sex, you will still get food to buy. Easy. So see you 5.30, we'll go to the third lab and then we'll continue. Is it getting better? Yes. Is it working? working? God bless you. Good, good, good afternoon. Bye-bye. My bishop, the greater blesses the lesser. So you are the one who is supposed to speak a prophetic word to me. But as I was preparing myself for this, in fact, it was not the church God gave me the word for. God gave me the word for you. So that it will reflect on the church. And God said, just as I said to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, tell the angel of the church in Akosubo, say to the Lord, that in the coming year, one of the things that will be evident in this church is access. Where God will give people in this church access to strategic places, strategic people, strategic positions, strategic people, strategic places, strategic positions. You know why? So that when we are about to do something and there is the need to consult someone in a place, by the time you get there, that you have somebody there who has it sorted out. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the Lord said, tell the angel of the church in a Kosovo that the one who is holy, the one who is true, the one who has the key, the one who opened it and no one shut, the one who shut and no one opened it. He said, tell him that I will open the door that no one and I will close that door. Close in this church is the outlet. Any outlet that allows people to go without any reasonable reason. Say of the law that outlet will be shut and no one will open. And do not allow yourself to be used as a tool to try to open the outlet. Because God said. If you attempt to open the outlet, that he will shut. Know that the one who is speaking is the Lord, the possessor, and the dispenser. Now, church, I want you to stretch your hands towards this altar. Stretch your hands towards the word influence. As a matter.